Never been excited to see uh, how to reverse engineer a whole video game for free. And just to do y'all a favor, I skipped through all the ads in this video, so y'all just watching it clean through me. You're skipping the ads, so please give a like, comment, subscribe. That's all I'm asking for. Reverse engineering is the process of analyzing a product or system to understand how it was designed and how it works. When you download a video game, you don't actually have access to the source code. It's very likely that your video game has been compiled into machine code, which isn't exactly readable to humans. When you run a video game, all the important information, such as your health, your ammunition, and so on, are stored in random access memory. We use reverse engineering primarily to find the... Random access memory is RAM. I'm only saying that because in this tech space, motherfuckers going to try to technically confuse your ass. I don't even know what the word I said is, but RAM. It's stored in RAM, all right? Ah, we here. There are two major types of reverse engineering, static and dynamic. Static analysis takes place while your program is not running. It's static because you're simply inspecting the structure and logic of the program. Dynamic analysis takes place while the program is running. We use it to examine the behavior of a program. Reverse engineering techniques are usually used by cybersecurity experts. Like just to my knowledge, it's static gaming, right? So like my favorite platform was OG Planet, like for computer gamings and stuff. It was built on JavaScript and stuff like that. But my my initial reaction, and please leave in the comments below, OG Planet, which had Tails Runner, Rumble Fighter, all the OG games, was that a static form of like game development? Because I'm thinking about what he said the definition was. It could go offline. Like there were certain games that was off or there were certain times the game just wasn't running. You know what I mean? So is that a form of static or is that a form of like dynamic development going static you know i guess as a cyber security expert question but leave in a comment below many programmers and game developers also make extensive use of debuggers to test the runtime behavior of their programs my point is that reverse engineering is used everywhere and even if you aren't interested in hacking video games, it's still an extremely important skill to acquire for developing high quality software. Let me say that, just like with programming, there's no simple way to get good at reverse engineering. I, I, I agree, but to an extent, reverse engineering is important. It's just like life. You don't want to wake up and worry about the steps it takes to get to your goal. You want to wake up and kind of know where your goal is and see what steps like backtracking as to how you personally could get to your goal. And that just changes the dynamic of like how you program and why you do it. So like in a way, reverse engineering is almost engineering another human like marketing. Cause you know, when you market, you kind of create your law, your archetype, you know, you create your human. So reverse engineering is basically creating the program you would have wanted from the start without starting from the start Oof, that was a fucking mouthful dog <laughs> all you can do is keep trying repeatedly your skill is essentially directly proportional to the amount of experience you have with that being said there are a few things that will speed up your progress having experience with lower level languages like c or c plus plus will be extremely beneficial to you if you're proficient with those languages, it already means that you are familiar with memory in terms of pointers, references, and addresses. Next, taking some time. Yeah, and that's a big thing because even, uh, like, I'm going to keep it short. One of the things I realized is why Python isn't a good language to learn if you're a beginner. You should learn C, C++ because C, C++ goes into how things are cached, trashed, and everything. I forgot, what is it, Malik? I'm not really sure what it exactly is called the process, but I know for sure Python, the language, which is, I don't want to butcher it, but which is built on kind of that objective learning framework, it does it for us, that process. So we never know how to do the caching, which is why a lot of tools and hacking is Python, because it's easier to kind of maintain because you don't have to worry about that one aspect that you would if you had to use C++, C Sharp, et cetera, et cetera. Most people, including myself, have their first taste of reverse engineering through Cheat Engine. Cheat Engine is a free and open source program that is designed for modifying single player games. It has a ton of features, including a memory scanner, multiple debuggers, a disassembler, and much more. Cheat Engine is popular because users can create so-called cheat tables.
Here's the thing, right? And I think that we got to normalize it because I want to be a pen tester. I'm pretty sure everyone want to be a pen tester, but I don't want to just pen test and break into people's shit. I actually want to be innovative, like tech innovative, because you got to know how to break into your shit to make new shit, to be innovative about the shit that you want to make forward. So it's kind of like a life cycle. So with that in mind, I don't know if programmers get this, but sometimes I forget my train of thought because I'll be, I'll be, you know, I... Give me a couple seconds. I'll make sure to edits catch it back. There are scripts that run within the cheat engine environment. It has a ton of features, including a memory scanner, multiple debuggers. That's what I was going to say. Huh, I remembered. That's what I was going to say. So in, in the grand scheme of understanding what bad things are, like scams, fraud, everything, the government should be lenient on certain things that's allowed and not allowed. Like, hey, look. I don't know. I'm not TOS friendly, but certain acts of violence should be studies for cybersecurity people to act as a tech police department. You get what I mean? Like we just got to switch up how we do things in order to be better at this online forensic stuff. Because you know, if you look at the statistics of how much people get caught, it's bonkers. And if you look at how easy the barrier to entry is, you can't sit here and tell me that the good criminals are getting caught. It's just the bad ones who don't know how to program. Isn't that nuts? Dogs. And it's like the police department. Only the bad criminals get caught. The good ones are like kicking in Cabo in a beach or something, looking for another person to go to jail for them. And again, I'm not TOS friendly, so... YouTube, I apologize. Cheat Engine is popular because users can create so-called cheat tables, shareable scripts that run within the Cheat Engine environment. Users with little to no programming experience can reverse engineer and implement cheats without having to write code. And furthermore, as I mentioned, they are shareable. You won't really find experienced cheat developers using Cheat Engine for tables though. Rather, you'll find them using Cheat Engine exclusively for the memory scanner so if you made it up until this point, you'll see how I use Python, which is mal uh, Python as an example of why you should learn C, which is just trash and stuff like that. And just controlling your RAM. I, I don't know what the abbreviations is. You go back to this nice fellow. He'll explain it. And the reason why any person would use this program is because they're a complete beginner. And hence red flag. If it's an open source thing, you kind of want to get used to the program and venture off into something safer. Um, networking is a good course you can take for that. But other than that, people, experienced developers do not use this program other than for testing. Exactly what I initially started it as. Like, crime should be more lenient. Someone shouldn't be going to stores, taking a candy, and going to jail for 50 years. If you guys can't even catch someone who's, who's doing credit fraud for $10,000. We're not even talking millions. Like, you guys got to be more lenient on the people who really don't got, like, got nothing. And, like, make sure the law is structured around people who can get around back doors. That's all my, I was trying to say. In terms of static reverse engineering, you're going to want a dedicated disassembler. And the most popular one is IDA Pro. IDA stands for the Interactive Disassembler, and it's a wonderful program but a license is going to set you back a couple thousand dollars. Luckily, if you can't get yourself a copy of IDA Pro, the National Security Agency has released their free and open source alternative called Ghidra. These programs are obviously very different. I'm not using nothing given to me by NASA, Homeland Security, FBI, CIA, DIA, DOA. I don't know what abbreviations y'all got, but stay the fuck away. You get what I mean? I'm not trying to rhyme. Go away are both primarily disassemblers. They also come with debuggers, and best of all, decompilers. Earlier I mentioned that when you download a video game, you don't have access to the source code. A decompiler is a program that generates C pseudocode from the disassembly. It's about as close to source code as you can get. 10 years later. Yo, this is gonna be an epic video for those who love me. I kinda just double back, you feel me? Cause I might end up using that open source project. Cause you know, if they giving me an open source project, to test. <laughs> I'm like back door NASA, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm on YouTube. I ain't doing that. Actually, everything I say could you could get you some time. You feel me? Off, oh hence, you should not rely on them. Rather focus on learning assembly code, because disassembly will almost never fail you if you can understand it. 
When you open a program in Ida or Ghidra, it will be analyzed, and the disassembly will be stored in a database on your disk. When you rename functions and variables, these changes are saved to a database. This way, over a long period of time, you slowly begin to rebuild the program from the inside out. Don't make the mistake of thinking that reverse engineering is a quick process. It even takes long for the people who make it look easy. I've mentioned debuggers a few times already, but I have yet to explain what they are. A debugger is a program that lets you set breakpoints at different steps during a program's execution. You can think of a breakpoint as a pressure plate or a tripwire. Once the target program reaches a breakpoint, the debugger raises an exception and pauses the program's execution. Once paused, the debugger will show a wealth of information, such as the addresses of local variables, registers, functions, and so on. Uh, for those that's programmers trying to understand and don't understand, I got you. If you understand, just, I don't know, chill out. Um, a debugger, basically to keep it short. Wait, wait I don't want to butcher it. Because I'm keeping it brief. Paused, the debugger will show a wealth point as a pressure plate. All right, that's what I need to hear. A debugger is basically an if and statement that when it's executed, <laughs> it's just going to give you information. So, like, think of it like this. You run in the game, you play in the game, right? That's the if and statement. If and, if and, if and, if and, right? Let's say it's Minecraft, the game, right? You get to a tree. We're not even going to get to what you do at the tree because I already know where some of y'all gamers are going or programmers. Hit the tree. Nah, that's not where the if and starts. We're talking about the if and, you feel me? The if and starts the minute you stop. All right? Because think about it. When you're running, you can cycle through your stuff in Minecraft. Yeah, but you can't use it. You can just cycle. So that's just a functionality in the game, right? So when you're running, you stop. Now, your actions to use the functionality are available, right? If user stops, you feel me? So now the if and keeps going, keep going, keep going. And then once the right thing is executed, it goes else. Keep going, keep going, else. Keep going, keep going, else. Like, and it's just a never ending cycles of else, ifs, ands. You know what I mean? So that's why knowing C sharp and C plus is important because it's dog, you reading nothing but if ands on that debugger log, bro, and trying to look for where your function was triggered and if it did the right action after. I know nothing about game development, dog. This is just technology, dog. Everything passes through the same line at the end of the day. We just try to like deteriorated so you can make one language seem more powerful than the other dog dog i ain't gonna go into it but if you really think about it english and chinese is the same thing people speaking to each other and communicate in something that could be communicated in one way let's really think about it dog. but let's keep it tight if you're looking for like hacking tutorials and stuff i'm gonna be the first to tell you these youtube people aren't giving you the best bang for your buck uh, I'll go to Cyberflow if I had any choice because I like their channel. I ain't sponsored by them. But in general, just try to like utilize artificial intelligence to learn. Don't use it to build anything. Just navigate your behind to the right location. That's it. Just like, comment, subscribe. Come to this channel if you need help on navigation and just everything overall. We reacting to everything, baby.